Even though the third episode of Rick and Morty Season 7 is a more emotionally charged journey than the stories told thus far in the outing, it still has some timeless jokes. The opening episode of Rick and Morty Season 7 had a segment centered around none other than Mr. Poopy Butthole, the supporting cast member. Rick and Morty Season 7, Episode 1, How Poopy Got His Poop Back, succeeded in focusing a full episode on Mr. Poopy Butthole's connection with Rick. Despite the fact that previous seasons of the show had essentially relegated the character's role to that of a recurring joke. This demonstrated that Rick and Morty Season 7 will not adhere to the show's established formula, a fact that was confirmed in the subsequent installment of the series. In The Jerk Trap, the second episode of Season 7, Rick and Jerry teamed up on an adventure that ultimately leveled the playing field for them both and gave them a chance to shine in a ridiculously entertaining tale. But the next episode's title hinted at something a little more somber, and the show delivered. Air Force Wong, the third episode of Rick and Morty Season 7, welcomed back Rick's therapist Dr. Wong for an amusing and moving adventure that had lots of laughs throughout. The president said that the Loch Ness Monster was brought to Lake Erie, where her bones were replaced with titanium. After that, a number of werewolves bit her, providing the U.S. with an ideal anti-submarine weapon. The president went on to say that the Loch Ness Monster appeared to be killed when the Soviets used a leprechaun to convert her bones to silver. This joke was made funny by the contrast between Rick's indifferent response and the progressively bizarre events the president recounted, much like many of the funniest scenes in Rick and Morty Season 7, Episode 2. Rick and Morty curled up with some television before Rick was called away on another errand. Mr. Stabby was the show they ended up watching because they could still access the old interdimensional cable, which was a mainstay of Rick and Morty. The show seems to feature an extraterrestrial with swords for limbs, asking viewers questions, and then killing them in the process. Rick naturally wondered why anyone would purchase tickets for this performance. Before long, Rick received a call from the president requesting that he assist him on another assignment. The president brought troops this time, but his so-called crack team was made up of a rock monster, a sentient fridge, and an alien that might be able to predict the future. While the program succeeded in elevating the modest gene to a heroic status years after the series premiere, it was unable to do the same with these unlikely experts in Rick and Morty Season 7. Every member of the president's crack team was virtually instantly overwhelmed shortly after they launched their attack on Virginia with the president. The hive mind played a major role in the plot of Air Force One, despite the fact that Christina Hendricks' unity hasn't been seen since Auto-Erotic Assimilation, Episode 3 of Rick and Morty Season 2. It revealed out that Unity was concerned about Rick Prime's mental health and had been attempting to speak with him for some time after learning about his search for Rick. The notion that Unity invaded the whole state of Virginia simply to speak with Rick was really valuable, and Rick and Morty expertly brought this old tale back to life with a befitting return for Unity. During his conflict with Unity, the president threatened to deliver 4,000 warheads to her ship, roughly 3,000 of which would be effective. The president then threatened to call China following this attack, suggesting that the nation's more powerful military would pose an even greater threat to unity, further underscoring this scathing jab at the U.S. military's excessive spending. But Air Force One contained more comedic jabs at U.S. officials than just this. The president attempted to cynically capitalize on the fact that unity had left Earth behind but her indoctrinated followers continued to operate as a single brainwashed mind as soon as he recognized this. After that, the president converted Unity's adherents into his most devoted fans. While many politicians would want to amass a cater of naive, unthinking supporters, this joke felt especially relevant, given that the president's drive to elevate himself stemmed from his insatiable need for acceptance. While Air Force One takes things a step further, many of the funniest jokes in Rick and Morty Season 7, Episode 1, were inspired by anarchic cartoon violence. Although there was still a lot of offensive humor throughout the show, Rick's introduction of Unity and his therapist in person was one of the funniest moments. Ever composed, Dr. Wong observed that the two had already interacted when Wong was absorbed into Unity's collective consciousness, saying that Unity momentarily resided in her body prior to continuing the discussion. Following the successful conversion of all the president's supporters to Unity's hive mind by Unity, Wong and Rick concluded that this had been a very unusual therapy session. The large assembly fell silent as Rick inquired about group discounts from the therapist, smiling at his own joke. Rick, feeling humbled, decided to send the bill to the White House and instructed Wong to do so. 
This joke demonstrated that Rick and Morty's departure from Justin Roiland and the modifications made to the formula might have been exactly what the show needed, as it gave these little stupid moments of character-based humor a higher priority than all the ridiculous sci-fi shenanigans. Rick listened to the voicemails Unity had sent him prior to her assimilation into Virginia when he got back to the Smith residence. As Rick came to terms with the fact that his former partner had actually contacted him out of worry and that he had rejected this attempt at communication, he grew more and more dejected and despairing. This caused him to strike a position that reflected his gloomy demeanor at the conclusion of auto-erotic assimilation. But the tone of the scenario was abruptly changed when Rick received a call from David Miscavige, complimenting him for standing up for Scientology. It seems that Air Force One would have a difficult time surpassing the weird non sequitur that featured a raging lawnmower in the opening post credit sequence of Rick and Morty Season 7. But the post credits conversation with Mr. Stabby elevated the show above this. The Rick and Morty supporting star retorted that any publicity was good publicity when a late-night host claimed that Mr. Stabby's show was somehow to blame for thousands of deaths during this heated exchange.